throughout time, people across the world told each other tales of how they came to be, of heroes and monsters, romance and tragedy, death and rebirth. Mythology helped shape the ancient world, explaining the unexplainable. This is Mythology Unleashed. Our tale begins outside the city of Selene, a Roman province in what is now Libya. Lurking in a large pond was an immense dragon. The dragon dominated its environment as it sat at the top of its food chain, and it was not long before it set its sight on Selene, devouring its people and livestock as they came to the pond for water. In order to satiate the dragon's voracious appetite and assuage it from attacking the townsfolk, it was decreed that every day a sheep be given to the dragon. For a time the ploy worked, but then the dragon's appetite grew, and soon the ordinance called for two sheep per day, and then three. Soon the city of Selene had run out of sheep but the dragon still had to be fed, lest he turn upon the populace, and the people die of thirst or dragon's wrath. A new solution was brought up, but one that broke the hearts of its citizens. The children and young people of the town would be chosen by lottery to feed the dragon. Whoever the lot fell upon, wealthy or poor, was delivered to the dragon. It was a heavy toll indeed, and each day there were cries of pain over the loss of their children. But what could they do? No one dared question the ordinance of Selene's king, and the city lacked the strength and courage to face the dragon in combat. The dragon may not have attacked the city itself, but it was slowly killing it, piece by piece, child by child. The townsfolk were trapped. They needed a hero. One fateful day, the lot fell upon the daughter of the king. Desperate to save his daughter's life from the beast that waited outside the city gates, the king begged his citizens to draw again, offering them all his wealth just so his daughter would be spared. But his subjects could not be swayed or bought where they all had given up something more precious to them than gold or silver. The king had no choice but to oblige. The princess was dressed as a bride and taken to be delivered to the waiting dragon. As the princess waited for the monster bound to the spot, it just so happened that at that very moment a knight rode into the clearing he was adorned in strong armor, a lance in one hand, a white shield in the other, bearing a red cross. This was St. George of Cappadocia, a warrior of some renown and a devout Christian. When he saw the weeping maiden, he ventured forth to learn of her predicament. After explaining to the saint her situation, she urged him to flee the area save his own life, and leave her to her fate. But no sooner did the words escape her lips that the ravenous dragon appeared before them, ready to consume the two of them. The princess shrieked in fear, but St. George made the sign of the cross and valiantly charged. Their battle raged on, and the sounds of their skirmish rang out across the glade. George battling braver than ever before, and the dragon, for once, battling a worthy opponent. In a last-ditch effort, George thrust his lance clean into the dragon's flank, wounding it deeply. As the dragon was trying to gather itself, St. George freed the princess and had her wrap her girdle about the dragon's neck. Using the girdle as a leash, St. George led the defeated dragon into the city, 
The townsfolk all at once were astonished and afraid, yet joyful that their princess was unharmed. After reuniting the princess with her father, St. George stood before the stunned crowd and the dying dragon, and offered to put an end to the creature's life and their long suffering, on the condition that they convert to Christianity. It was certainly a small price to pay after all the suffering they had endured. Upon agreement, St. George beheaded the dragon, ending its cruel life. After the dragon's corpse was carted out of the city with four ox carts, St. George proceeded to baptize the king, the princess, and countless citizens, old and young alike. The king granted the brave knight a reward of gold and silver, but George instead urged him to divide it amongst the people. After St. George went along on his way, the king had built a church honoring the Blessed Virgin Mary and the incomparable St. George. And in the place where George struck the dragon and its blood sank into the ground, an immense spring emerged from the soil whose water was said to be so pure that it could heal any injury and cure any illness. So ends the tale of St. George and the Dragon.